Get ready with me while I tell you about my toxic friend that I cut off after 21 years. All right, so my friend, let's call her Olivia. Thank you, One Direction. I've known her since kindergarten and everything was fine until we got to high school. She started to get a reputation of being the boy stalker of the entire school. She would somehow find guys numbers and she would message them, never getting the hint that they weren't interested and people just weren't too keen on her because they were afraid of her. When it came to boys, there was no boundaries. She actually messaged my sister's boyfriend after she went with me to visit my grandpa while he was in hospice. My sister's boyfriend was with her. She met him for probably one second, didn't even say anything, messaged him on Facebook that night and basically said, hi, I'm Olivia, we met at the hospital. Girl, why are you signing in his DMs right now? Not only that, but there was actually a guy that I was talking to Guess whose DMs that she slid in? Um, he ended up sending me the text messages of proof saying like, is this your friend? She was hitting on the guy that I was talking to. This is supposed to be my best friend, mind you. We got in a fight, things were fine. I always end up taking her back because I'm too much of an empath and I was just like, okay, you made a mistake. She didn't though, because we ended up going to college together and this is where things get really bad. There were these two guys, I thought one was cute, she thought the other one was cute. Um, her guy was also really, interesting he would uh keep girls underwear and put them on his fan in his room so that's the kind of guy that she was going after i don't even think i ever spoke to my guy i just thought he was like cute but this is where it gets bad so we were in like the common room one day and her guy is passing and me and her are playing pool he comes in and he's trying to be like all flirtatious and says like oh like can i play pool with you guys she walks away she goes to sit down on the couch and then she's looking at me like angrily like and I'm like, what are you doing? This is your moment to shine. The idiotic guy goes, oh, winner gets a kiss. So I'm like, oh my God, Olivia, what are you playing? Like this was the perfect setup. The guy just, he didn't even care. He just wanted anybody. So I was like, listen, he's ready to go. Okay, you really want him, let's do this. She's just staring at me. So I'm like, okay, this is great. I did not entertain his conversation whatsoever. I ended up leaving with her and I'm like, we're not doing this. As we're leaving, the guy that I think is cute is passing and he looks in and he just waves. That was it, nothing else, a wave. She's still mad. So I'm like, what happened here? She ends up sending me a really long paragraph that night about how she's upset that her guy said the kiss thing when I literally was trying to be her wing woman. And then she was mad that the guy I thought was cute waved at me. So this is just the beginning. Get ready for part two. Welcome to part two. So this entire book, I shouldn't even call it a paragraph. This book is her describing how she's upset because she thinks I'm pretty. She's describing how she's upset that the guy I think is cute waved at me. And I said, why would that make you upset? Like you should be happy for me because that's the only interaction I've had with this man. She did not care. I can understand feeling like insecure, but I didn't do anything wrong. But she was directing her anger at me. So that was that. Let's fast forward. And I actually started talking to a guy at college. And this was like, actually like we weren't dating, but we were seeing each other. This is where it gets really, really weird. Okay. Things are going well with this guy. He's literally sleeping over. She literally has the audacity to text me one day and go, Hey, so I think me, you and blank should go on a vacation together. Maybe we can share him. She did not mean like all of us, having a party together and which I would also not be okay with. She literally to the T wrote, I can have him one night, you can have him the other. A guy that I'm actually like talking to. Tell me how that makes sense. Tell me how you have the audacity to bring that up. I kind of let that slide because again, I always took her back after a fight. I don't know why. I think it's because I felt sorry that she didn't really have any other friends and I've known her for so long. So I'm like, oh, it's just like something that she does. I ended up leaving the college like a few months later. I just wanted to do different things. And thankfully I did because during this time is when I met my now husband. She did not like this. She did not like that A, I had somebody who liked me. And she also didn't like that B, I left the school. She ended up leaving the school shortly after as well. And she kind of refused to ever meet my now husband. She did meet him once. We all went to get bagels, but like any time he was visiting from England, I'd be like, oh, like, I really want you to see Sam. And she'd be like, no. And I was like, okay, that's kind of strange. Over this time, she was having a few different boyfriends and she cheated on every single one of them, sometimes with their best friends. So this is when I started pushing away because I'm like, I don't want to be friends with someone who has no remorse for something like that. 
We decided to go on a little girl's getaway upstate and she is at the supermarket with me and she goes, what should we cook them for dinner tonight? I go, who? Like we're in the middle of nowhere. Who are we cooking dinner for? Go to part two, I'm so sorry. Welcome to part three. This girl has the audacity to say that these two guys are coming over. One for me, one for her. I'm dating Sam at the time, okay? I think we were together maybe like two years at this point. I'm like, are you actually kidding me? She had these two guys come over and I said to her, if you leave me alone with one of these men, I will never talk to you again. Thankfully she did not, but I was not happy. I was texting Sam the whole time like, I have to get out of here. Also, side note, the guy that she was like bringing over, she cheated with her other boyfriend with this guy at one point, but she said it was one pump, so it didn't count as cheating. Now, the next part is probably the worst thing that she has ever done, and I don't know how I took her back after this. This should have been the last straw, but one of my friends passed away, and the day after she passed away, Olivia was gossiping about it to everybody. She messaged me, and she messaged my other friend, and she was like, hey, did you hear this is how she died? It wasn't even correct. Like, it wasn't even the way that she died and she was just gossiping about it. So I said, yes, I understand that she passed. She was a close friend of mine and I'd rather not talk about that. And she goes, oh, sorry, didn't know you guys were best friends. That was her reply to me saying that I was upset. Keep in mind, throughout our entire friendship, she never once was there for me. Like, anytime I needed her, she wasn't there. But every time she needed me, I dropped everything like that. Everyone around me, my friends and family were always like, why are you still friends with her? She treats you like garbage, and I just couldn't see it. But after my friend passed, and she was just making it a gossip thing, and then not even showing her support or anything, that's when I was like, all right, you're disgusting. <laughs> Anytime I would call her out on something, she would end up blocking me on legitimately every single platform. I don't know why, it was almost like I did something wrong. So she would block me and then whenever she decided like, oh, okay, I'm gonna message her now, she would just message me like nothing happened. She would literally message like, hey, how are you? Not an apology, not anything. After the whole friend thing happened, I ended up taking her back again. It sounds like we're in a relationship. I ended up taking her back and this is when it was like around the time of my wedding. So we were talking about my wedding. I was so excited. I obviously sent her the bridal shower invitation, the wedding invitation. She did not come to either one. My best friend did not come to our wedding. She didn't even send a congratulations card. She didn't even say congratulations. She also did say she was gonna come to the bridal shower and she just didn't come. Her parents are also just as bad because they've known me since I was five years old and they couldn't even say congrats. So I was just like, this whole family is so toxic. And to this day, she has still been messaging me. And guess what, guys? I have not answered. So I'm finally done. Get rid of the toxic people in your life. You guys have asked for it. So here's a story of the time a Portuguese girl cursed me out in front of her because she didn't realize I was also Portuguese. Now, people speaking about me thinking that I cannot understand what they say has happened to me many a times. But this one was particularly jarring because it had a lot of racist undertones, to be honest. So I usually go back home to Portugal every three to four months. I'd say I try to go back home often to see my parents. And last summer, I bought my friends along with me and it was fantastic. It was great showing them around. I've been friends with them for almost seven years now, which is insane. They're my best girlfriends and it was really nice showing them my home and showing them where I'm from. Now, as part of that visit, we decided to include a water park trip into the itinerary just because they're not really common here in the UK and they're super common in Portugal, especially in the Algarve where I'm from. And at these water parks in Portugal, for some reason, Reason, they always have like exotic animals for you to take pictures with like they'd have snakes they have eagles they have owls random birds and when you first go into the park they do this thing where they take a picture uh, of you and your group with one of the exotic animals in this case it was a parrot as soon as we go into the park they shuffle us in and they take us to the picture taking section with the backdrop and the animal and everything and there were three people there. There was the photographer, and then there were two people who were carrying slash managing the parrot. So the girl who was holding it and this other person who was helping the girl, probably also taking care of the parrot. I don't know what his role was in the situation, but he was there. So my friends and I are a group of six girls, and they were basically shuffling us in and rushing us to take this picture, you know, with the backdrop. They're trying to fit us in, and they're trying to get one of us to hold the parrot to take the picture. And they were treating this as if it was like a full damn photo shoot. They were like rushing us, like, who's taking the picture? Who's taking the Come, 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 come. Who's, who's holding the parrot? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? Chill. This is a damn water park. This isn't a Vogue photo shoot. They were really like rushing us and rather aggressively, I'll say. 
Let me also add that there was no one behind us, okay? There was zero queue. We came in a little bit late, so we were the only ones who were taking the picture at this time. So they're like rudely trying to shuffle us in and we're just like, okay, okay, I guess I'm gonna go here. And the girl, as she puts us all in line, looks at all of us and says to the guys, Nenhuma delas agira. Nenhuma. Nenhuma mesmo. For those who don't understand Portuguese, that means none of them are pretty. None of them. None of them are pretty. In the moment, I thought I heard it wrong. And as the only Portuguese speaking person of the group, I bit my tongue because I thought maybe I heard it wrong. I'm not gonna cause drama. I'm just gonna let it slide. And I'm gonna have to do part two. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, part two of the time when a Portuguese girl literally insulted me and my friends in front of my face because she didn't realize I was also Portuguese. So this para girl literally just said that my friends and I are all ugly without knowing that I'd understand to her guy friends over there. I don't know if she's a pick me girl. I don't know what she's trying to do, but she was like, none of them are pretty. And I bit my tongue because I thought I heard it wrong. She then in English asked us if we were all sisters. My friends and I are all around the same age. It's six of us. Like, do the mental mathematics in your head. How do you think that works? Also, apart from us all being Asian, we look nothing alike. So clearly, I'm sensing a bit of racism over here. Now my friends and I are all too non-confrontational for our own good so we kind of just laughed it off and we're like oh no we're actually all friends we're not sisters um, and we just brushed it off and then this girl grabs one of us and goes this one will do in Portuguese she says Esta pode ser, as if like this one is pretty enough to take a picture with her fucking damn parrot like who is who, who who's your parrot anyway why are you taking this so seriously and as soon as I heard that I realized that she did in fact call us ugly earlier and that I didn't hear it wrong and not that this matters for anything, but my friends are objectively very attractive. They are very gorgeous. They are conventionally attractive women. So this girl, I'm not being biased or defensive by the way, they are pretty. So this girl was clearly either a pick me girl or a racist, I don't know what she was. So when she said, ah, I guess this one will do, I literally replied and was like, I can literally understand what you're saying. I said that in Portuguese and she was like, I could tell that from her face, she was so shocked. But her first reaction was, what? I didn't say anything. She immediately became so defensive and was like, I didn't say anything, I didn't say anything. And my friends were just confused because they can't not understand the interaction that's going on. But even before I explained to them what was happening, they were already getting like a lot of negative energy from her. They were, they were already complaining like, oh, why is this girl so rude? Why is this girl like looking us up and down? So even without hearing the insults, they knew that this girl was cussing us out. So we kind of all just left after taking the picture and I explained the situation to them and they were pretty shocked to say the least. And it just didn't feel right, but we just went about our day. And then we actually realized later on, like maybe like a few hours later, that was really not okay. And even though we're non-confrontational people, we decided to go back, find her name and complain. On our way trying to find her, we bumped into the guy who was a photographer who was there at the interaction and who saw everything unravel. And I saw him and I asked him, what's the name of the girl that insulted us earlier? Without even like hesitating for a second, he immediately gave us a name, like immediately. We found her, we found her manager. I left a pretty detailed complaint in the complaints book, uh, which we call the Leave Clemensões in Portugal, which is a pretty big deal because sometimes businesses have to pay fines based on those complaints. So yeah. Get ready with me while I tell you about my favorite case that I've ever had as a lawyer. I took this case not long after I passed the bar. Another lawyer had already turned this case down, which usually is a red flag. But the only reason the lawyer had turned this case down is because it was a fairly minor car wreck and they couldn't find any insurance to cover the accident. And I say minor car wreck, it's obviously never minor if you're the one who's involved in the wreck. It turns your world upside down. But there was no catastrophic injury. So she calls our law firm and the call gets routed to me. We ended up chatting for about 30 minutes. So the facts of this case are that this was an elderly lady. She was rear-ended. She was in physical therapy for neck and back pain. But after the wreck, even though it wasn't her fault, she was cited for having an expired driver's license. But it was the reason her driver's license was expired that really got me. She had stage four breast cancer. And in between going through chemotherapy, radiation, and treating for her accident injuries, she hadn't had time to go and renew her license. And now she didn't have any transportation because her vehicle was totaled and there was no insurance to cover the accident. I immediately take her case. 
And in the back of my head, I'm like, I'm a new associate at this law firm and then you're gonna absolutely kill me and maybe fire me for taking this case that we're probably not gonna make any money on. So the first thing I do is start arranging transportation to all of our doctor's appointments and trying to find insurance wherever I could find it. Thank goodness I did eventually find some insurance, which was amazing, but that's not why this is my favorite case ever. So I found insurance and I'm negotiating her injury claim with the insurance company. Well, remember how I told you she got a citation for driving with an expired license? Well, she calls me one day and says, hey, I think I have a court date coming up. For my expired license. Well, I am a civil lawyer, not a criminal lawyer. And not only am I a civil lawyer, but I'm a brand new one. Two very different kinds of lawyers. I know a lot of y'all are thinking, well, just refer to a criminal lawyer. She was paying for chemo, radiation. She didn't have money to pay a criminal lawyer. I am so new to the practice of law at this point that I have no idea if public defenders even like handle that sort of thing. Either way, I'm like, you know what? We're doing it. Oh yeah, and by the way, the court date was the next day. I tried to arrange transportation for her to meet me at the courthouse. Nothing. Keep in mind, this is like pre-Uber in my area. Also, I forgot to tell you, she is bound to a wheelchair. Hey, sorry, don't hate me. There's gonna have to be a part two. I immediately call the judge's office, ask for a continuance or for them to reset the hearing. No dice. I am freaking out. But of course, I don't want anyone to know that. So I call the client back and I'm like, okay, everything's good to go. I'm gonna pick you up for your hearing tomorrow. I don't sleep at all that night. I wake up the next morning, throw on my best suit and head out to her house. Pull up in my teeny tiny Hyundai. I go to her front door, wheel her down to my car. I get her loaded in the front seat and I go around to the trunk and load up her wheelchair. This wheelchair barely fits in the back of my car. I get to the courthouse. I get her and her wheelchair out and wheel her in. I am so nervous and literally shaking. I have no idea where to go. I'm too proud to ask for help because I'm a lawyer. Yeah, I got over that real quick later in my career. Finally find where we're supposed to go and we get in there. I have no idea where I'm even supposed to stand. I like see all these lawyers over in the corner and I'm like, I'm probably supposed to stand over there, but I have never been to court alone at this point. So I sit with my client and I wait until our case is called. And at this point, it's our case, not just her case, because I am seriously invested. Judge calls our case number and I stand up and I walk to the front and he says to me, have you had a chance to talk with the prosecutor yet? The uh, prosecutor? This is where I think I did something really smart. I said, judge, may I approach the bench? He said, yeah, of course. So I go up there and I say, judge, I am not a criminal lawyer. I represent this client on another issue. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. He was so kind. He was like, I got you. That's the prosecutor over there. Go talk to her and you'll be able to work out a deal. I was like, Psh, I can handle that. Our agreement was that if my client would get her license renewed in the next 30 days, they would drop the charges. Y'all, me and this client are like throwing a party on the way back to her house. The reason this is my favorite case is because I didn't make any money off of that, but she and I remained friends. When I had my son, he spent almost a month in the NICU. She called at least once a week just to check on how he and I were doing. A few years later, I ended up representing her when her back was broken during a really devastating bus crash. And a few years after that, I got a call from her daughter telling me that her mom wanted her to call and notify me when she passed away from breast cancer. I still think about how much I learned from her, not just in law, but also in life. And she was and will always be my favorite client.